Did you know that you can transform a path or selected points on a path? Watch this. First, I'll duplicate the path. Then hold down the option on the Alt key and click on the path name to load the control points that make up the path. Next, choose Edit and either choose Free Transform Path or choose one of the transformation operators. And I can enter a scale factor right up here in the options bar. Here I've been able to quickly change the size of this path. Now you can stroke this path for a special effect. Set up a painting tool and hit enter. It's as simple as that. This will apply all the attributes of the tool that we just set up to the path. Some of the other editing operations available to you are to modify the selection commands. The border command allows you to create a border around the selected area. Some of the other modify commands available through select are to smooth the selection, which is nice to round off corners when you have a very intricate path or a selection. The expand and contract commands let you swell or contract your selection by a specified radius. Perhaps a better way to modify a selection is to edit an alpha channel. We've seen how you can use any painting tool to add or subtract from a mask. It turns out that you can also apply filters to change the appearance of a mask. I'm going to go ahead and select a part of our selected area and then apply a filter to it. Applying a motion filter gives you a nice effect and a selection to use when applying any special effect showing movement. Another way to edit the contents of a channel is to run the minimum or maximum filters. Choose Filter, Other, and Maximum or Minimum. These are great ways to visually expand or contract a selection. Here's a quick before and after. Finally, a way to edit a channel by altering its tonal data. Here I've created a black and white version of the image on top using a channel mixer adjustment. It turns out that an adjustment layer gives you ready access to a layer mask in order to make smoother transitions and masks. To combine the two layers, I'll add a gradient to the layer mask so that the central figure appears in color, while the rest of the image appears monochrome. The first thing to do is to target the layer mask. And I've gone ahead and drawn a gradient. Where the mask appears black or dark in the layer mask, it shows the colors from the layer below. To adjust the distribution of color in black and white, we need to adjust the layer mask. So Option or Alt click the layer mask thumbnail to view just the layer mask. Here I can use any editing tool to change the tones. In the Levels command, I'll darken the midtones so that more of the figure is masked or blocked from the monochrome effect. Then you can fine tune the mask by choosing a large, soft brush. Set the opacity to something lower than 100% and paint in black or white to fit your selection nicely. At this point, you can go back to viewing your composite by Option or Alt clicking the layer mask one more time. I'm painting in black on these areas that I wish to remain in color. 
then I can switch my foreground color and paint out the areas that will need to have the monochrome effect show through. This is what we've ended up with and this is what the layer mask looks like. We've looked at many ways to edit and tweak selections in this lesson. I hope you can adapt these techniques to use them in your own projects.